rather quizzical negative response, suggestive of a poor image, low awareness, Sri Lanka? Or, happily, the response to that question, he comes from Sri Lanka, could be Sri Lanka, a buoyant, positive way of looking at Sri Lanka, suggestive of a positive image of the country. And if you generalize this response, you could clearly say that if someone says Sri Lanka and the right people say Sri Lanka, then that would impact, that would help our tourism, needless to say, it will positively impact on our exports. The whole notion of country of origin, a lot of work has been done on country of origin and that's how it impacts if you have a positive image of the country. Tourism, exports and of course investments. Very quickly, let's look at what a nation brand entails, its chief constituents and elements. The expert in nation branding is Simon N. Holt, who actually coined the phrase nation branding in 2004. And uh, Simon N. Holt has developed his nation brand hexagon, which I'll very quickly go through. There are six key elements that impinge on a nation's brand image. What are they? Tourism its people, culture and heritage, exports, investment and immigration, and the policy of the government. And all these six factors together impact on nation branding. It helps create or destroy the image, the identity of the nation. Interestingly, let's look at Country Nation Brand Index, developed by Simon and Holt, the top 10 countries of the world in terms of nation brand equity. USA, top slot, Germany, followed by UK, France, Canada in fifth position, Japan, Italy, Switzerland, Australia, and Sweden. Interestingly and importantly, all 10 countries have nation branding programs and that is something to note you want to look at how asia pacific figures in this whole equation brand finance looked at the top 10 asia pacific brands and china is heading the list followed by japan india australia taiwan singapore indonesia thailand malaysia hong kong and sri lanka is in 16th position and also there is a brand value that has been worked out by brand finance. There's a way in which you compute brand value. And uh, you see China's brand value and you see Sri Lanka's brand value, which is 31 billion US dollars. Uh, interestingly, I was reading uh, some brand equity figures. Uh, Coca-Cola is valued at 74 billion US dollars. And that's interesting, ours is 31. So, there you are. If nation branding is tough, is there an alternative? Is there space for sector branding instead? The question, ladies and gentlemen, is should we settle for less? I will take you through very quickly the uh, argument for sector branding versus nation branding. Let's talk about branding exports. Now, this is a very interesting economic reality. In fact, a mega economic reality that is often glossed over. Global supply chains and the global distribution of wealth, a subject that is not much talked about, but one that merits inquiry and investigation. Why do I say that? Look at what's happening. Increasingly, the design and branding of goods and services are done by the first world. And increasingly, sourcing and producing of production services are done by the third worlds. So this is a kind of neo-colonial hegemony of the first world. And this is the economic reality that we need to 
come to terms with. And Simon and Holt, in his recent book, talks about the need for brand new justice. And he argues that this trend must be reversed. The third world must attempt to own and develop brands and reverse the trend. Look at our own tea. If you take the total supply chain, do you know that Sri Lanka gets only a third of the total value chain when it comes to our own Ceylon tea? Two thirds go to brand owners and the distributors, and we have only one third. And that's the economic reality. Unless we own brands, unless we dictate terms as it were, we will have only a small fraction of the total mix. I would very quickly refer to uh, the case of Ugandan coffee, which basically tells you the predicament of the third world. Uganda exported its coffee essentially to North America. Right. And they were exporting non-value-added coffee. And Walmart in North America was a chief buyer of Ugandan coffee. And recently, Walmart struck a deal with a company in Brazil called Original. And Brazil grows, processes, roasts, and packs ground coffee in retail tins and ships this product to individual outlets of Walmart. And virtually overnight, Walmart stopped buying Ugandan coffee and they now deal with this Brazilian company, Original. And you can imagine the fallout the predicament of the Ugandan coffee farmer. And that is the predicament of countries that don't add value, that don't brand their products and services. Branding. Is there a scope for Ceylon tea? Yes. Ceylon cinnamon. Ceylon sapphire. Sri Lanka apparel. And Sri Lanka tourism. Ladies and gentlemen, here's my point. We haven't even sorted out the basics. Is it brand Sri Lanka or brand Ceylon? We have Ceylon tea, Ceylon cinnamon, then we have Sri Lanka apparel and Sri Lanka tourism. So what is your brand name in the first place? Have we sorted that out? First things first. Right. So if you want to go ahead with this, we have to come together, put our heads together and have a clear way forward, a clear strategy. You need to clear the basics first. I'll take only five more minutes. Branding Sri Lanka tourism, and I'll take you to my conclusion. This is a case in point, branding Sri Lanka tourism, and you've got to remember, ladies and gentlemen, that branding is a positioning job. Branding, in a sense, is a positioning job. And what do I mean by that? You position a product in the mind of the customer, Finding a distinct position in the customer's mind and placing a product there is the positioning task. And that is the positioning job that we've got to do with our exports to begin with. Let me give you some classic examples. If you're thinking of cars and if you're thinking of Mercedes, there's a word that comes to your mind naturally and spontaneously. What's the word? Prestige. If you're thinking of BMW, there's a word that comes to your mind naturally and spontaneously. What is that? Performance. And that's why you're driven in a Mercedes and you drive a BMW. If you're thinking of Volvo, the word that inevitably pops up in your mind is safety. And I would argue that the greatest asset of these companies or these brands is the fact that they own a word in your mind, that you have a clear position of their brands in your psyche, in your mind. And that is the greatest strength that they have. Toyota is all value for money. So there you are. Positioning Sri Lanka tourism. I was involved uh, five months before the war ended. We were trying to develop a positioning strategy for Sri Lanka tourism. And the whole project was sponsored by the Sri Lanka uh, Tourist Board. And uh, I facilitated the process uh, with captains of industry. and. Uh, we looked at the positioning line that was developed, a land like no other, which actually did not work. Uh, it was clearly acknowledged that this positioning line was not working. 
And what we attempted to do was to deconstruct this positioning statement. And I'll take just one minute to tell you what we actually did. Land like no other. I asked the question from the industry. Is it land like no other to have? People visit countries to buy things, to have things. Yes, we got an Odell law. I don't know, House of Fashion, but that's it. And that's not a stand, a strategic position that we can take with regard to Sri Lanka tourism. So we dismissed that in one minute. Land like no other to do. Adventure tourism, bungee jumping, whitewater rafting. Yes, we got an Arugambe, we got a few places. But that's not a position that we can take. We cannot stand for that. So we took about three minutes and we dismissed that as well. Land like no other to relate. This is the whole mice market. Meetings, conferences. You are a Rotarian and you have a conference of Rotarians in the region. And Sri Lanka is the place. We don't have a conference room, conference area. VMIC is the only one that we have. I mean, these are just ballrooms. So, not really. That's not a position that we can take. And then came land like no other to see. That sounded interesting. There are many things to see in this country. But against our big brother, India, we are dwarfed. There are many more things to see in India. So we said we'll park that idea. It's a good one. Let's revisit that. And then the next one was land like no other to be, being, wellness, doing nothing, sitting on the beach. And we said, that's interesting. That's what we actually offer. But against our small brother, Maldives, we will not actually measure up. So what do we do? And then came the breakthrough idea. Two months later, a number of workshops were held, in fact. And we put the two together, seeing being as a combined. And we said, let's also put the others, the do and the have, in the periphery. And if you have seeing being plus, the word that we came up was diversity. And that's hard to beat. And what's more, this rich diversity happens in a small geographical space. And therefore, the word compact, compactness was operative. So diversity and compactness was a winning combination. Authenticity is the word that I introduced. We researched this in the UK market, and it had currency. It had value. I'm rushing through a long process. Asia and Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen, we had a clear positioning statement for Sri Lanka tourism, perhaps the first time. Five key words that define the stand, the strategic position of Sri Lanka tourism. Asia's authentic, diverse, compact island. Now that's how you develop a positioning statement, a positioning strategy for the sector. Positioning made simple, this is one of my favorite quotes, 